Hey all, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today we are continuing on with some AP Physics 1 um, rotational motion. Okay, so um, as usual, I suggest you pause the video, attempt the problem on your own, and then come back and watch the video. Okay, so we have a problem here. Some physics students build a catapult as shown above. The supporting platform is fixed firmly to the ground. Project on this, uh, a projectile of mass 10 kilograms is placed in cup A. So I got a 10 kilogram over here at one end of the rotating arm. A counterweight bucket B is loaded with the various masses. Greater 10 kilograms is loaded at the other end. We'll call it M. Uh, the arm is released from the horizontal position, it begins rotating. There's a mechanism that stops the arm in the vertical position, allowing the projectile to be launched with the horizontal velocity shown in figure two. The students load five different masses in the counterweight and measure the resulting distance, and they plot it, and then use a best uh, sketch a best fit curve. Okay, so it probably look. Ooh, that was. Let me try to freehand this. There, something like that. It would actually probably keep increasing. So let's draw it so it's increasing still. Ah, there you go. At uh, using your best fit curve, determine the distance x traveled by the projectile of a 250 kilograms is placed in the counterweight bucket. That's about here. Oh, we'll call that 35, I don't know, about 32. Uh, X would be equal 32 meters for that one. Students assume the mass of the rotating arm, the cup and the counterweight bucket can be neglected. With this assumption, they develop a theoretical model for X as a function of counterweight mass using the relationship X equals VXT, where VX is the horizontal velocity as it leaves the cup and uh, T is the time after launch. How many seconds after leaving the cup will the projectile stri strike the ground? This is a kinematics question. Because com it comes out with horizontal velocity, but what dictates how long it's in the air for is uh, the vertical distance. And so I'm going to want to use this equation. Delta X is equal to um, uh, V naught T plus one half AT squared. But I want to look in the vertical direction. Um, in the vertical direction, delta X is, is 15 meters. It has no initial velocity, that's zero, because in the vertical direction has no initial, it only has horizontal velocity, plus one half. Its vertical acceleration is g, t squared. So I can solve for t, t is equal to the square root of two delta x over g. It's equal to the square root of two times 15 meters, divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, oops. I get 1.75 seconds. And so that's that's how long it will be in the air for. Um, derive the equation that describes the gravitational potential energy of the system relative to the ground when the position shown in figure one, assuming the mass in the counterweight bucket is big M. Okay, so uh, the potential energy relative to the ground is um, MGH, right? The potential energy is MGH. MGH of this guy, which is MGH plus MGH. And so the little m is 10 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times three meters plus big M times 9.8 meters per second squared times three meters, because they're both three meters off the ground. And 10 times 9.8, three is 294. 294 plus 9.8 times three is 29.4 M. So that's its potential energy. And I kind of see where they're gonna go with this. Then it rotates and it has some energy here um, in this system. Now, the way you want to think about this is there's, there's actually two ways to think about it. You can think about it as this having kinetic energy, this having kinetic energy, and this, these two both having potential energy. Or you could think of the kinetic energies as part of rotational energy. So I, I'm going to do it both ways, and I, I kind of want you to see why you would get the same answer. So the total energy afterward, they both definitely have potential energy. 
So the 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 U the the U um, in Figure Two is the potential energy that would be 10 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times the height now, which is 15 meters off the ground, plus um, the potential energy here. Well, this thing is only two meters away, right? And so if it's three meters, then then it's really one meter off the ground. So this would be m times 9.8 meters per second squared times um, one meter. Okay, then it has rotational energy. Well, at, at this point, I want to think of it as one of two ways. It's going to have either rotational energy or kinetic energy. So let's talk about how I compute the rotational energy. For here, there's, there's two quantities, and they're both going to be the same. If I do it as rotational energy, it's 1 half i omega squared. Now the i i is equal to mr squared for, for, for fixed masses at a fixed distance away. So when I calculate i, I do the 10 kilograms times 12 meters squared plus the countermass m, which is 2 meters squared away. And the reason I do this is because um, th this is 2 and 12. It's, it's the, the, the distance from the point of rotation. Okay. So this would be um, one half times uh, ten. This is 1440 plus 4m times omega squared. Now we need to relate omega to v of x, um, and the relationship is that v of x is equal to r times omega. What r do we use? It's it's the velocity here. So I need this distance, which is 12 omega. So Omega is Vx over 12, so I plug in Vx over 12 squared, and what I get is um, I have a Vx, well, I'm going to leave the 1 half. I'm going to do the, this 12 squared is 144, so that becomes 10 plus 4m over 144. That's, um, yeah, that's um, m, 144 is divided by 4, right? m over 36 vx squared okay so this is um the this would be the kinetic energy rotational energy okay but if i wanted to do this so that's this quantity here that, that's going to go right here one half 10 plus m over 36 vx squared i want to show you that if i use kinetic energy of these two things that i'll get the same answer so the kinetic energy of the, what's moved, the, the, the mass up here as a side problem is 1 half times 10 kilograms times Vx squared plus 1 half times m times the velocity of this bottom. But similar to the idea of the rotational like motion is that since they're both rotating at the same angular velocity, what matters is the, the, you see the ratio is two to 12. So this is gonna move at one sixth the speed of this guy. And the other way to think of it is that the omega is the same for both of these objects. So omega, you know, omega is V over R. So it's equal to VX over 12 meters. It's also equal to velocity at the bottom here over two meters. And that tells me that VB is equal to, if I you know just multiply by two, I get VX over six, okay? So um, if I do this, I factor out the one half, I can do 10 plus, um, I can factor out a VX squared. And then this is squared, this is 36, so it's M over 36. And you see, I get the same quantity here. So there's, there's two ways, this is an interesting way, like it's good to illustrate that there's two ways to find the, the, the energy of the motion. You can either think of it as rotational motion or you think of it as two separate objects having their own kinetic energies, okay? Now, it would be harder if this, if we had to include the mass of this thing because this thing does have some mass and it doesn't have, you know, like then, then you need to think about the rotational energy there versus what you would consider the kinetic energy when different parts are moving at different speeds. Okay.
Sorry about that. Should have put my phone on mute. Okay, so anyway, so here's the final energy afterwards. So let's kind of, um, my goal is to set this equal to the initial energy, potential energy, and then solve for Vx, right? So um, let's do a few calculations, and I'll do it in red just so you can kind of see. This quantity, this 10 times 9.8 times 15 is 1470. This is 9.8m. And this is um, 5 plus m over uh, 72. I just multiply the 1 half times vx squared. Okay, I was just kind of doing that. So then I can set that equal to that. I'm going to bring all of this um, over to here, right? So when I subtract it, what I get is 29.4m um, um, minus 9.8m. I get 19.6m minus 294 minus 11, oh, sorry, 1470 minus 1176 is equal to this. Well, then I just divide by this uh, 5 plus m over 72, right? And that's vx squared, so vx is equal to the square root of that. Okay, so that's my vx. And then complete the theoretical model by writing the relationship for x as a function of the counterweight. So x, which we said was uh, the mo theoretical model was x is vx times t. t is 1.75. I just do 1.75 square root of 19.6m minus 11 1176 divided by 5 plus m over 72. This is all quite a bit of algebra. Okay. So now compare the experimental and theoretical values x for a counterweight bucket of mass of 300 kilograms and offer a reason for difference. So what do I get? At m equals 300 kilograms, I have x is equal to, this is just a calculator, 1.75 square root of 19.6 times 300 minus 1176 divided by 5 plus 300 divided by 72. I get uh, 39.6 meters. Now this is higher than the 37 meters, right? And that's because we ignored a lot of things that the you know we did an energy conversion. We ignored a lot of things. We ignored the masses of all these things, right? They, they those have energy because they're moving too, even though we decide they're negligible. That would cause my Vx to go down because some of the energy has to go into there. I have some friction here, so I lost some energy due to friction. So there's a lot of explanations why. Uh, uh, I lost some energy that I didn't account for in these equations. So I hope you found that helpful. Um, I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content. And see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.